Hey, hi, in this video, we will see how to perform an ETL operation from Amazon RDS Oracle database to uh, Amazon Redshift cluster with using AWS Glue. So here we will see, you know, how we can, ma you know, maintain the configurations on the Amazon RDS uh, for Oracle database. And then uh, we, on the other side, we're going to create an Amazon Redshift cluster, which is basically data warehouse. Now, the aim of this video is to help you to understand how you can build the ETL pipeline with using AWS Glue, uh, which can migrate the data. That is basically an example, uh, Amazon RDS Oracle, uh, you know, database table uh, into the Amazon Redshift, uh, you know, uh, Amazon Redshift cluster. So here, you know, we're going to see how we can construct the AWS ETL job, which can help you to migrate your table from Amazon RDS Oracle into the Amazon Redshift cluster. Now, why we need to do this one is because, you know, the Amazon Redshift is a data warehouse service, which will help you to provide the, you know, lot of capabilities, lot of enterprise capabilities, which includes for reporting, uh, for machine learning purpose, for analytics purpose. So you need those data, right? So that is the reason the, uh, the here, you know, I'm going to show you like how you can migrate your data from uh, Amazon RDS Oracle database to Amazon uh, Redshift cluster with using AWS Glue. So here, um, I will first walk you through the Amazon RDS configurations, and then we're gonna see some part of what is the configurations maintained on the Amazon Redshift cluster. And then, you know, we're gonna see how we can build the AWS ETL pipeline, which can help us to, to migrate this table from Oracle database to the Amazon Redshift cluster, all right? Okay, so as you see here, I'm currently in Amazon RDS page and uh, I'm in Oregon region. I have the Oracle uh, Enterprise Edition database instance, which is RDS instance. So this is my uh, instance name. And then the, you know, I have maintained the uh, configurations on the, uh, on a particular dedicated uh, VPC as you see here. So I have a dedicated VPC for this. Uh, we have the subnet right in the in the security group so we have opened the uh, ports uh, so so basically if you see here so and then um, you know if you see that this is our database instance like that right so all together you know my uh, rds is my rds for oracle is ready so i've considered that this is already set now what we are doing is you know so to access it from my uh, i know uh, oracle um, sql developer client i have uh, purposefully made uh, accessible from the publicly but you can encapsulate within your VPC and try to access from the jump server. That is also a suggested method. Now I have taken this instance uh, over the Oracle SQL developer, uh, you know, the client. So this is how it looks. So uh, if I can show you here. So here we have created a temp, you know, a table, an example table called employee. And the schema of that particular table is something like this. So you don't need to worry. I'm going to share this uh, SQL queries that is needed to create a table, insert the records because you know, consider that these are needed to perform this lab. Or if you already have, no need to worry about it, but this is for the people who don't, you know, who wants to learn it, all right? So we have created a table for this part of the demo, then, you know, we insert a certain records. And then when I query this particular uh, table, you know, I'm gonna get certain records. So if you see that, you know, so this, uh, uh, you know, this particular table uh, has three records as you see here, all right? So, um, yeah, so it's basically, it's, it's looking for connections, uh, by the way. So if I can refresh it here, uh, let me try to, uh, let me try to rerun that again. So it looks like, you know, uh, uh, so it looks like the error error connection has been disconnected. Let me connect it and, and come back again. Okay, so as part of the demo, I have added few records. If I see here, uh, what I'm doing is, you know, um, to make some record added in this employee table, I'm just... Uh, adding few records, but in your case, it is may not be necessary. So, you know, so it looks like, uh, you know, we have added the records, by the way, I think that there is an error if you see here, because, you know, we have defined that uh, uh, email address has to be unique. Okay, so this is basically, you know, uh, uh, it's just a prerequisite. So I'm just completing, completing it as, as soon as possible, um, right? So uh, let me try to show you, you know, how much uh, records do we have uh, uh, for this particular demo. So here you go, right? So right now I have, uh, uh, you know, these many records. Let's try to, uh, you know, try to migrate this table uh, into the Amazon Redshift cluster. All right, so let me uh, take you to, so with this, you know, what we have seen here is we have seen the uh, source side that is Oracle, uh, you know, th that is Oracle uh, RDS, and then we're gonna see the Amazon Redshift, okay? So Amazon Redshift, you know, I have, for this demo, I have created the uh, Amazon Redshift, if you see here. Uh, if I go to the, uh, you know, the uh, Amazon Redshift serverless, uh, so we have this work group and within that you know we have created this uh, uh, you know workspace 
and that workspace has the uh, database equal to dev and uh, currently it does not have any table so if i click on a query editor like this so you know rds comes with the inbuilt query editor option which means that you know you can access the amazon redshift cluster over the internet it basically it provides a client uh, on the on the internet so if i open this particular uh, you know the work group and then uh, if i go to the uh, you know this one that is uh, table so in this uh, in this particular uh, you know the uh, database instance uh, we have the schema like public and you know so that does not has any kind of table for now so what we do is you know uh, so this is the status in the other side okay so it does not has any table for now what we do is you know now we're gonna quickly jump to the uh, to the vpc then we're gonna start the you know how we can build the uh, etl pipeline in the glue so uh, on your vpc you need to create a, a three uh, you know the vpc endpoints basically one uh, is the s3 interface as you see here so you need to create a s3 interface uh, endpoint on your vpc and the other one is you know s3 gateway as well and then the glue because we're going to use the glue with using the vpc endpoint all right so that is what i know i have created on the vpc so remember that uh, so if i go to this resource so this is our vpc that is ending with 4a6 so the endpoints are created in a 4a6 so so if i can show you how you can create the endpoints uh, click on this endpoint and try to uh, you know so try to search here like you know give a give a friendly name here and then you know search with the you know search with the service say for example s3 right so it will have the uh, you know the uh, uh, endpoint types that is of interface or gateway and then you're going to choose the vpc and the respective configurations as expected so what is the expectation here is you know so you should have the vpc endpoint on your on your vpc where rds is sitting uh, where the you know redshift cluster is sitting also sitting in the same vpc and right, so that is with that you know let's go to the uh, you know the to the aws group that's where the you know, lab will be uh, you know in detail explained so this video is purely focusing on helping you to understand what is that you can set up on the aws glue uh, so that you know it actually uh, so that it actually uh, migrates the data from amazon rds for oracle enterprise to amazon redshift which is a data warehouse service for this one first we go to the data catalog and get create the connections because you know so if i go back to the diagram again so here we need to have a connection to this particular uh, amazon rds it also need to have the connection to the amazon redshift cluster then only it can build the pipeline so for that case we need to create a connection so i'm going to go to the uh, option connections and click on a create connections then we go to the next option that is there is a oracle uh, database option is there so we're going to choose that template and here automatically it will list down the you know the databases remember that this is only possible if you have enabled aws glue endpoint on your vpc so that's the reason it is coming here and i have the user name and, and password for my uh, oracle database instance which i'm going to use this one so i'm going to use this particular password uh, and and pl place it here uh, in the networking options i'm going to keep it everything default because so this is going to sit in the same vpc where my rds and redshift is has been sitting right i'm going to go to the next one so then here you can give the name like uh, whatever you want and then uh, go create the connections basically once the connections are been created you can do a test of it because you know the uh, working connection is, is is much required so we're going to go to the you know the uh, you know the particular connections and we're going to choose im role that is uh, so if you see here this is etl lambda access role which is an admin role and that role has a trust with the aws glue services amazon redshift services and amazon rds services so this is a, a basically an admin access role with a trust relationship with the aws glue services amazon rds services plus redshift services so i'm going to go on a confirm click on a confirm so basically it is uh, you know it is throwing there let me fix it and i will come back to this particular uh, you know fixture so as you see here my oracle connection went fine because i didn't do anything but i just changed the subnet a little bit and then you know the kind with this oracle connection that we have built just now it got connected all right so with that you know we have established the oracle connection let's do the similar thing for the uh, rds as well sorry for the uh, redshift as well so i'm going to go to the amazon redshift click on this one so automatically it will list the work group and the database name uh, username and the password is the same password i have used for um, redshift plus rds so i'm going to use it uh, as it is and then uh, like this and we're going to go to the next options so let me uh, keep the name equal to default and then the rest all configurations i'm going to keep it default and create an a, a clear you know create an a create connections 
so redshift connection is also been created and let me do a testing uh, doing a testing is much needed because or else you know you might end up with having a failure in the connections so that's the reason always confirm the connections okay so here uh, again it is having a network issues let me troubleshoot like i did for oracle and come back to the uh, continuation of the demo okay so as you see here the error test connection error is complaining about the you know the availability zone so what is that we need to do is we just have to switch the uh, you know the uh, the um, uh, the configuration or basically you know we just have to switch the the subnet which is being chosen in the in the connection that is what you know i'm going to do here uh, so earlier if you see that you know we have choose this subnet but we also have the another subnet which we can definitely choose it so uh, you know the password i'm going to re-enter the password again so what is the problem you know sometimes you know from, from the particular albert zone the connection gets disconnected also has the some issues which i have observed by the way but again if you have the issues maybe you can uh, check with the aws as well so this is what we're going to do it now so i'm going to switch to the another subnet and uh, save the changes and let me do the connect uh, you know do the test connection again so i'm going to do a test again by using the rule and let's see what it happens this time so what is the basically i have observed that you know switching the subnet you know it has it has given me the good result that is not basically the connection was working so here let me go on a pause and come back again okay so by changing the subnet in the connections you know i have established the required connection which is a good sign uh, so with this you know we have uh, uh, you know completed the prerequisite of having the connections now we can go ahead and try to build the etl job so to build the etl job what i did is you know, i'm going to build a visual etl job here by you know by pointing the source equal to amazon rds for oracle and destination equal to redshift cluster so here i will go to the visual etl here and then in this one we have the uh, you know the um, so we our source is basically rds so we're going to choose that so this is let me call it as the oracle rds so let me rename it as oracle rds right uh, in the JDBC connection, so we're going to use the connection that we have already. So I'm going to use the Oracle connection here and then uh, I know get, then give the name equal to. So we have the uh, table name. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, if you see here, so it is asking the give the table name. So our table name is nothing but employee. So I'm going to go to the uh, table name here and let me copy the, uh, you know, let me copy the table name from here that is employees. So this is my table i'm going to uh, copy that as well so with that you know so here uh, you see that there is a preview option is coming here you can just use the uh, you know the etl lambda access role which i was showing you while establishing the connections what happens is you know if, if everything is is you know fine from this particular uh, configuration perspective so we should expect that you know that there should be a data preview available here so this data preview will take some seconds or basically few minutes so which i don't want to uh, you know keep on a hangover here what i do is i'm going to go on a pause and come back for this one okay so after you know waiting for a couple of uh, you know minutes uh, i could see that data preview is giving us the result so these are all the data i want to migrate into the amazon redshift servers all right so with this you know we are done with the source set let's go to the add node part and this time we're going to go to the target so here i'm not doing any kind of transformation but again you can do it so here aim is to show how we can do a you know data transformation from uh, rds to amazon redshift okay basically both are the sql storage but meant for different purpose okay so that's the reason i want to show you here so we're going to go to the amazon redshift here so we're going to give the name equal to amazon redshift parent equal to oracle rds and then the, we're going to go to the connections so we have the connection that is uh, uh, you know the uh, redshift connections and the database you could let it be uh, database and the schema so here uh, you know uh, let me use the schema that is public schema and table you know let me give the table name equal to so right now remember that you know i have not created any table here but i'm wishing that you know the uh, uh, the pipeline etl pipeline to create on its own let me see if that works if it not works then i'm going to create it by the way so i'm going to give the name you know the use equal to employees and then here always i'm going to use the merge the data into a targeted table so we're going to use merge with using the option id here right so and then uh, so if you see that these are very important and critical com you know uh, configuration that you need to maintain so we given the name equal to employee and we say that merge that is aws glue will either update or append the data to the table based on the set of records right uh, so and, and then you have the truncate as well uh, drop as well which is can be used different you know, based on the 
demand of the situation or demand of the pipeline okay so with this operations you know we are done with the pipeline and i'm, I'm gonna save this particular pipeline and what we do is you know we're gonna run this particular job so right now we have built the uh, etl job so if i go to the visual so right now if i refresh it we will have the uh, another job that is oracle rds to redshift so i'm gonna go uh, to this particular job and uh, do a run job so what you do is you know we are running the instance of this particular job so basically uh, it will take certain time amount of time so if you see that you know currently it is running right so while it is running let me show you on the destination side right now we don't have any table nothing is there i know let me see you know if this works because i'm expecting that the table should be created on the fly and data should be loaded as well on the fly right so that is i'm expectation if it is not you know we're going to create a table and then we're going to rerun it okay so that is what the expectation is here so i'm going to you know uh, you know the expanding the schemas table you know basically database and the schemas so right now nothing is happening Ho you know uh, if i go to the uh, in the in the oracle rds to redshift uh, you know the pipeline run so if you see that you know it is still running so what i do is you know i'm going to go again on the pass because to save the time okay so after waiting for more than uh, 1 hour 43 seconds as you see here the job is successful and let's go to the you know the uh, redshift cluster so in the redshift cluster if i refresh it now um, we should expect a table right so that table and with a data in it so if i expand this particular work group and then go to the db that is dev db uh, schema equal to public and then we're gonna go to the and see if the tables are being created so here we go we have one table been added now because earlier as i showed you there were no tables were there uh, but now let me try to do a select on this particular uh, table and see if the records are uh, showing as expected right so i'm running a command that is uh, you know the select uh, from this particular table here you go right so basically you know we have shown you that you know things need to be shown in this video here right so what we have shown is basically uh, you know we have shown you that the data from the amazon rds so if i go back to this one so the data from the amazon rds for oracle is now gets migrated to the amazon redshift cluster with using the pipeline and this pipeline can be scheduled and you know it will keep on migrating your data from amazon rds to the amazon redshift cluster uh, with using the pipeline all right so uh, so in this video you know you can find the link of my github repository where i have shared the script of the etl job which can be used uh, from your side all right so with that note uh, you know thank you very much for watching my videos kind request please do subscribe my channel that would really encourage me a lot with that note thank you thanks a lot and see you in the next video